Lorenzo. Yes, not Meg. You must record July Blu-ray editions. Maybe not now, not Meg. I'm not really in the mood. No, you must do it now. Nah, I think I'll do it tomorrow. Do it now. Okay, fine. Jeez. H how about this? I'm gonna go watch a movie, and then I'll go get to it, okay? That is acceptable. Two elderly women are at a Catskill Mountain resort, <clears throat> and one of them says, boy, the food at this place is really terrible. The other one says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. Well, that's essentially how I feel about life. That was this week's episode of Lorenzo referencing Annie Hall. Join us next week to see Lorenzo unnecessarily reference the same darn movie. So you guys know what we're doing. We're doing Blu-ray editions. Now, I'm in a different room right now, and that's because usually I record these videos in my TV room, but uh, the Olympics are going on, and in case anybody wants to watch an event of some sort, I don't want to uh, hog up the room, so I'm just in my room currently. I'll be doing that for maybe this episode, maybe next video, but for now, let's just get on to Blu-ray editions. So, starting us off is... Talladega Nights. Uh, arguably my most unpopular film opinion is that Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, is the perfect movie. Am I saying it's perfect? No. I'm saying more comedy movies, and just movies overall, need to try and be more like Talladega Nights. Let me explain. Talladega Nights perfectly follows Blake Snyder's Save the Cat formula, which is basically a formula that every movie uh, unconsciously follows. Talladega Nights perfectly follows it all the way through. Uh, it has the perfect happy ending where everyone wins, even though not everyone really wins. Uh, it's incredibly funny. Uh, and yeah, I just think Talladega Nights is the perfect template for how more movies should be. Along with the fact that Ricky Bobby's two children, the main character of this movie is named Ricky Bobby, his two main children are such brats, and it's so funny. Like, in one scene, uh, the grandpa is telling them off, and then instead of, like, taking it like uh, a normal person, uh, one of them says, Shut up, Chip! I'll scissor kick you in the back of the head! <laughs> What the heck? This this movie's actually really funny. And I, I, I might think that this is the most raunchy movie I've seen. Like, this is PG-13, and it's the raunchiest movie I've seen. Keep in mind, I've seen Tropic Thunder, and I still think Talladega Nights is extremely raunchy. So next is Seabiscuit. I think this is a really, really mediocre movie. On the back... Uh, the Chicago Suns Times, uh, on the back it said that they say, Seabiscuit is a must-see movie-going experience. No, it's not. It's really boring. This movie is spectacularly boring. Horse racing isn't exciting. But the whole reason I bought this was, uh, I went to Goodwill one week with my mom, and she said, Oh, no, this movie's really bad. Don't buy it. And I was like, okay, so the next week, I go, and it's still there. And, mama, I bought it, I just thought about it over the week, and I was like, you know what, I'll buy it. Because my mom has so far been on a streak of telling me really great movies are bad. She told me that Catch Me If You Can was bad. It's not, it's a great Steven Spielberg movie. She told me Casablanca was bad. That movie's also not bad. It is a classic. She also told me K-Pax is the worst movie ever. It, it's not great, but it's not the worst movie ever. It's pretty good. And then she was on to Seabiscuit. So I was like, you know what, Mom? I'm going to prove you wrong for the fourth time. So I bought the movie, and I watched it, and then immediately after, I texted her, you know what? You were right about Seabiscuit. This is a really boring movie. Uh, I couldn't actually get invested into it. On the other hand, though, acting-wise, this is a stunning movie. Uh, Tobey Maguire was good. 
Uh, Jeff Bridges was also really good. And as much as I hate to say it, Elizabeth Banks was also pretty good in this movie. Uh, I can't get into all the reasons I hate Elizabeth Banks, but just know I don't like her. Uh, but yeah, Seabiscuit, uh, it did a good job at capturing, like, the 20s. Uh, it had good cinematography as well, and it had good acting. But it was an extremely boring movie. It was hard to get through. It was, like, two and a half hours. Ah, oh, man, I don't. I, I really agree with my mom. Don't bother seeing Seabiscuit. Uh, next is The Terminator. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing I want to bring up before, uh before I talk about this movie is Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger is awesome. This guy came to America and got famous lifting weights. Then he becomes the Terminator. Then he decides I'm gonna become the governor of a state I can't even say correctly. And he does it. He does all those things. Arnold is truly the success story of America. Uh, but yeah, Terminator, I love this movie. Uh, it has great action. Uh, Sarah Connor's good. Arnold's good. One thing that I feel people don't talk about enough is how really cool Kyle Reese is in this movie. He's a really cool character. Uh, and I like certain parts of this movie a lot. Uh, it, overall, I just think The Terminator is an incredible movie. And next up is an even more incredible movie. That's right, Terminator 2. This is a sequel better than the original. I love Terminator 2. It is one of the greatest action movies of all time. Like, it's... For me, I'm kind of still undecided if I like Die Hard or Terminator 2 better. Because they're both awesome movies. And people will often hold them in the same regard. But... Currently, I'm undecided, but Terminator 2, that movie is awesome. Uh, there's a lot of great fight scenes. I think the T-1000 is awesome. Uh, what else? Hmm. Oh, that, that. There's a scene in a galleria, like in a hallway, and oh my gosh, that is a great scene. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but there's a scene in, the, in a hallway that will definitely surprise you. Uh, check out T2 if you, ha if you haven't. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's well worth your time. And also, uh, if, you, if you would direct your attention here, uh, there's a girl in this movie who I absolutely hate. Uh, it's this girl. Oh, just missed him. He was here like 15 minutes ago. I think he said he was going to the Galleria, right? Yeah. The Galleria? This girl snitched on humanity. She snitched on humanity. What the heck? But yeah, Terminator 2, great action movie. Oh, one more thing. Uh, another thing I kind of liked about this movie is... In the first movie, Sarah Connor was, like, helpless. Uh, Kyle Reese was doing everything for her. And she was just kind of, like, running and trying not to get killed by the Terminator. Or terminated by the Terminator. But then in the second movie, she's awesome. Like, she she is uh, gun crazy. She tries to escape from a mental asylum several times. I just think Terminator 2 is a fantastic movie. Uh, I should probably stop talking about it soon. Okay, so next up is Minority Report. Oh, now this is a great movie. Uh, actually, this is a good movie until the last 20 minutes of it. Like... Everything about this movie is incredible. And then you get to the last... Fly, sorry, fly. There was a fly. But you get to Minority Report, you have everything. Like, the first two hours of this movie are incredible. And then the last 20 minutes of this movie just kind of... Eh. They, like, try and kind of make it the ultimate happy ending. And I just... Really, it really felt forced. It really did. Uh, but Minority Report is really good. Fun fact, by the way, uh, not only is Tom Cruise my favorite actor, but he's also the same height as me. I am five foot seven, and so is Tom Cruise. Uh, yeah, so Tom Cruise is really short. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was a really good movie. Uh, one thing I really liked about it is this scene with Colin Farrell and Tom Cruise, and they're kind of having this argument on predetermination. Because this whole movie is about uh, a police force that 
arrests people before they actually commit a crime. And so they're kind of arguing over the, the, the morality of it. And then so Tom Cruise just rolls a ball off of a table and he's like, why do you catch the ball? Because Colin Farrell goes to catch the ball. Why do you catch the ball? And Colin Farrell says, because it was going to fall. And then so Tom Cruise is like, how do you know it's going to fall? It didn't fall. And I, I loved that scene because you have two people who have very strong beliefs on something just kind of using uh, their... Uh, their wits to try and outwit each other, and it was a really, really well-written scene. So next up is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, finally got it. Uh, uh, you don't see this, but that took me about ten tries to do. It's a long title, and it's the sequel to Rise of the Planet of the Apes, starring James Franco. Uh, so... I think in some ways Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a better sequel, but overall I think Rise of the Planet of the Apes is just the better movie than Dawn of the... You, what, you know what I'm talking about. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was better than Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and in some ways Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was better than Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Oh my gosh! Tongue twister. Uh, but yeah. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, what I kind of liked about this movie is they not only fleshed out the human characters a bit more, so I actually cared about them, but they also had some internal conflicts within the apes, and I liked that idea. And plus, the third act was completely action-packed. Uh, overall, I just think this is a great movie, and... Since I don't have much else to say, here's a quick fact about apes. Did you know that in the Omaha Zoo in Nebraska, there was an orangutan, or orangutan, is it orangutan or orangutan? I'm not sure. I'm just going to say orangutan. So there was an orangutan who found a bobby pin and then hid it under his lip, like where, like right in front of his gums, right behind the lip. So like... That area, You're, he just hid bobby, a bobby pin in that area, or some sort of lockpick device. But then, he used that to free all the other orangutans, and then would just sit in his cage innocently, like nothing happened. And that went on for a, for a couple days, and it's cool and all, but it's also kind of scary to think that some orangutans are smart enough to free themselves at any point they'd like. So, uh... I, I don't think any of these Planet of the Apes movies are too far off in terms of monkeys being smart enough to take over the Earth. Now, call me a conspiracy theorist, but if any type of animal were to take over the Earth, it's probably gonna be monkeys. <laughs> or apes. Uh, so next up is... Oh my gosh. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. My favorite comedy of all time. I, I could say that Annie Hall is my favorite comedy, but I definitely consider that to be more of a quasi-comedy. It's a comedy, but it's more dramatic. So, uh, in terms of like real comedies where you just laugh the whole way through and there's not much drama to it, Monty Python and the Holy Grail goes at top place. It's my fourth favorite movie of all time. Uh, I love everything about this. Uh, you know what? One thing that's amazing is this is probably the movie I've seen the most times. There's no way I've seen this under 150 times. I know this movie so well that I can pretty much recite it from memory. You know what? That doesn't sound like half bad of an idea. I now present to you... My interpretation of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. The swallow may fly south with the sun, or the house martin or the plumber may seek warmer climes in the winter, yet these are not strangers to our land. Are you suggesting coconuts migrate? Listen, strange ladies lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. It's just a flesh wound. So, logically speaking... If she 
weighs the same as a duck, then she's made of wood. And therefore... A witch! Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelled of elderberries! What is your name? Sir Lancelot of Camelot. What is your quest? I seek the Holy Grail. And what is your favorite color? Blue. Right then, on you go. That's easy! What is your name? Sir Robin of Camelot. What is your quest? I seek the Grail. And what is the capital of Syria? I don't know that! I have a lot of nostalgia for Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, it's definitely my go-to recommendation when people ask me for a comedy recommendation. Uh, so if you are looking for a good comedy to watch and you haven't seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail, yeah. Uh, I could honestly talk about this movie for hours. It's one of my favorite comedies. It's one definitely the funniest movie I've seen. And like I said, it's the movie I've watched the most times in my life. Uh, so I should probably move on before this recording goes from maybe 15 to 20 minutes to three years, because that's how long I can talk about Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, so next is The Royal Tenenbaums, uh, on DVD, because the Blu-ray is expensive as heck. Uh, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Wes Anderson directed it, and he's my favorite director of all time. And The Royal Tenenbaums is my favorite movie by Wes Anderson. So logically, it should be my favorite movie. No, it's like maybe 10th? I don't know. But Royal Tenenbaums, it's a fantastic movie. I reviewed it a long time ago in January, I think. Uh, I don't like that review very much. Uh, it was edited poorly. I got it into the wrong aspect ratio. And so there's just black bars surrounding my face. Uh, I talked spoilers, and I don't really like the reviews where I talk spoilers, but, uh, The Royal Tenenbaums, I give it an A+. It's a great movie. By far, one of my favorites. My favorite Wes Anderson movie. Uh, and if you don't like Wes Anderson, are you sure? Or have you not seen The Royal Tenenbaums? That's a great movie. Next up is another great movie. You got Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, yeah. This is the greatest, one of the greatest action movies of all time. Uh, one of my favorite car chases, too. I, I just love this movie so much. I love World War II movies. I love action movies taking place during World War II. One of my favorites, other than the Indiana Jones movies, are, uh, is, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Great Escape. Uh, the Great Escape is my other favorite World War II movie. And a lot of people might say, like, oh, my favorite's Schindler's List or Saving Private Ryan. Those are incredible movies. But, come on, the Indiana Jones movies, they're awesome. And they're also directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, I just really love Indiana Jones as an action hero. Uh, one thing I really like about him is just this fear he has of snakes. Because it kind of, like, finds a way to make him seem more human uh, instead of, like, this big action hero who, like, knows a lot about archaeology and, uh, can do anything. Uh, what, one thing that's really genius about this movie is how it, uh, uh, directs es exposition scenes where, uh, where, uh, uh, they kinda add something to make it more suspenseful. Like, uh, in one scene, Indiana Jones is, uh, finding out where to find the... Uh, wh whatever, I forgot what they're looking for, uh, th uh, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, Indiana Jones is finding out how to find it, and then also you find that some of his food is poisoned, and so you're still paying attention, like, okay, is he gonna eat, is he gonna eat that poison food, and so you're on your, the edge of your seat, and you're actually paying attention to expositionary scenes, I like it when movies can, uh, uh, get us to pay attention to an exposition scene without some, like, big explosion or something to just make sure you attention, you pay attention. Something like that, where it, it's suspenseful, but it's also expositionary and important. And the final movie for Blu-ray editions is V for Vendetta. Uh, by far, this is my second favorite comic book movie. My first 
is uh, The Dark Knight. Like, out of my top five comic book or, uh, or superhero or manga movies, uh, my top five would be somewhere around, uh, like, first place is The Dark Knight, V for Vendetta, uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Edge of Tomorrow, probably Iron Man at fifth. Uh, v for Vendetta is incredible. It's just about this guy and this girl who are starting a revolution against a very tyrannical government in England. And everything about V for Vendetta is perfect. This is a great movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Hugo Weaving's good in it. Uh... Natalie Portman is the other one who's really good in this, and it was actually written by the Wachowskis, who, uh, as you might know, wrote The Matrix, and directed The Matrix, as well as its two really disappointing sequels. But yeah, V for Vendetta, great movie. So in case you didn't catch last month's Blu-ray editions for June Blu-rays, uh, I decided instead of doing Blu-ray of the month, which, uh, which decides which is the best looking Blu-ray I got of that month, like which had the best audio and video quality. Uh, I decided to do a uh, movie of the month instead, which is just the top five movies that I saw that month uh, out of the, the ones that I got. So we're just gonna do that now. Uh, starting us off at fifth place is V, is v for Vendetta. Uh, this is a good movie, don't get me wrong. I love this movie a lot. But the reason I put it uh, so low is because I just like the other movies that I got uh, a lot more. So this all comes down to personal preference. Uh, next is The Royal Tenenbaums. Now, I love Wes Anderson's idiosyncratic uh, directing style, and he definitely had this in here. But this was also a very character-focused movie, and I love those types of movies. So next up is Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, this is definitely in the top five action movies, but at second or first place, remember, I'm still undecided, Die Hard or Terminator 2, but yeah, Terminator 2, uh, the quintessential action movie, uh, and number one, get ready, drum roll, it is at first place, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Now, this is another choice that all is down to personal preference. Like I said, I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie. Uh, it's in my top five favorite movies. Uh, it's funny as heck to me, which is, you know, a subjective thing. All of this is subjective. So that's the really the only reason that Monty Python and the Holy Grail was the winner of Movie of the Month. So that just about wraps it up for this month's Blu-ray editions. Before you head out, why don't you tell me what your favorite of all the movies I got this month were? You saw my favorite. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. After you do that, you can head on out. Stay safe and watch good movies. Bye!